Right now, it's about time to get to my final guest for the day. And uh, we want to talk about using art um, in entrepreneurship or creating a business out of art and art crafts. And specifically today, we'll be looking at handcrafted jewelry. My guest in studio is Laura Luala, and who, she's the founder of Pride Arts. Karibu sana to the show. Thank you so much, Trace. Right. Now, tell me a bit about Pride Arts. I understand it's an online shop selling handcrafted jewelry. Yes. When did you begin this venture? I started it in 2011. Mm -hmm. I was still in campus at the time and I did it to get extra pocket money okay. because I was a bit <laughs> uh, broke at the time. <laughs> then okay. it's just uh, I'm very creative mm -hmm. uh, on a normal basis mm -hmm. so I grew to love it and it changed from handmade cards to beads to brass over time. Glass? Brass. Brass, brass yes. Brass. Yes. Okay. Um, before that had you tried any other sort of entrepreneurial venture? Ah, uh, not really. Okay. Before that, so you know. the pocket money was needed. And yes. This was the one you settled on. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. How did you get started? Did you have to sort of spend time maybe trying to learn a bit more about? Because you said you started with was it cards or yes, handmade cards. Cards. Yes. Did you spend time learning about it about different paper types, or you just you know decided to put your mind to it and create something? Actually, I just started uh, with embossed paper. That was the one which was available and it was very cheap. Yeah. I remember I had 200 shillings. Wow. And then I went and bought the papers. Then I just came to the house and started creating a few things here and there and selling to my friends and family. Uh -huh. And from there, it just grew. Who was your first client? Do you uh, it was my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> it was my uncle. Because it was around the uh, KCIC period at the time. Okay. So I had a few nieces and nephews and cousins who were in school. Mm -hmm. So my uncle offered to buy the cards from me to send oh, it to them. Up to your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's really nice. And you started all of that with just 200 bob. Yeah, yes. It's amazing shillings. how just the smallest amount of money can start something, isn't yes. it? Yes. All right. Yes. And so from there, then you moved on into what were you studying actually? First I of all? studied actuarial science. Actuarial science. Yes. Okay. Yes. After how long did you do cards for before you decided to branch out? Now mm, into I did work? it for around um, six or eight months. Then I got interested in beads. Actually, someone wanted a card with beads, the oh, Maasai beads on yes, them. Yes. So I had to look for a Maasai beads support. Then I just got interested in what more can be done with the beads. Yeah. Then I started creating jewelry. And from there, it just grew. Okay. Yes. How, how was it those first six months? Were you, after your uncle and your family members supporting you and your friends, were you able to pick up the business? Yes, I did. I actually, I was able to pick it up mm -hmm. and also got into social media, opened a page. At the time, it was called Pride Designs. Then with time, I had to change the name. But yeah, I picked it up. I saved up from whatever money I got. I saved up, invested into the business. Slowly, Good for just you. Grew. So you moved from this just being pocket money <laughs> to yes. now you're actually saving it. Yes, because I was so surprised. I didn't think it would make money at the time. You know, when you're in campus and you're making maybe a day you can make even 5,000. You're like, oh Wow, my God. in campus. Yes, I yeah, was that's very pretty excited. Impressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so young at the time. So. Yeah. Uh, of course, I didn't know how to manage money very well at the <laughs> moment, but it did help me to see a bigger thing other than just pocket money. Yeah. Yes. So how did you, I'm curious about how you got that discipline in place because, you know, for a university student, 5,000 bob a day, that's a lot of money. Yes, it did. Yeah, it, I was a bit, it got into my head a bit. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, did you, what, what did you end up spending the money on? Clothes. You seem, oh yeah, you, I was going to say, you seem like a very fashionable <laughs> person. So I'm already picturing handbags and clothes. I loved clothes, handbags, I'd go to class in heels. My mom was just like, oh, this girl finished this school at this street. <laughs> <laughs> You're studying actuarial science yes, in heels. Yes, yeah. <laughs> My dad was quite concerned at the time. They were like, maybe you should keep this aside and finish school. But I was so adamant. But they supported me. Yeah. And it turned out well. I did finish school. I started working. Oh, okay. Then I, I still continued with the craft. Okay. Yes. So are you still working today? Yes, I'm still working. Okay. And yes. you're doing this on the side? Yes. I have a full career at the moment. In actuarial science? Yes, in the industry of actuarial. Good yes. for you. Good for you. They say <laughs> yes. it's important, you know, to have multiple streams of income. Yes, it is. So it's not just about like, oh, this is my passion and I never want to be employed. Like, no, no, no. Think I of your employment as another source of exactly. income. Exactly. It okay. so happened that I really love my job. So yeah. 
I can't really give it up. Mm -hmm. I have, it hasn't come to mind that I have to give one up at the moment. Okay. So I try to run both of them at okay. the same time. Though it does get challenging at some times because now I have to get back to school. Mm -hmm. Then responsibilities at work also increase. You're going back to school? Yes. You want to do year. your master's? Yes, I want to do my master's Wow, this year, okay. Yes. So there'll be a, a challenge as far as juggling your time. Exactly. How has it been juggling the time between the business? Because you're still making these yourself? Yes, I do make them myself. Mm -hmm. uh, it became, it has become overwhelming at times. Uh, so I'm sourcing for help at the moment. Okay. I'm looking for other ways whereby I don't have to be, if I can't make them, then nothing can happen. Mm -hmm. So, but with work, it's, work uh, can be crazy because I'm in the financial sector. Yeah. So it's a bit crazy at times. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so then you moved into beadwork after mm -hmm. the cards mm -hmm. and now you're saying you're even working with brass. Yes. Okay, and yes. again, this you you sort of had to teach yourself. Yes. And do school of YouTube. Yeah, school of YouTube. <laughs> By the way, YouTube teachers. Eh? <laughs> yes, school of YouTube. People are out here making bank because they went to YouTube University. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so opportunities are all around us. They are all around us. Yes. So now, when it comes to brass, that's that's an even bigger game. Now you yeah. have to go and source materials. Yes. How did you get into all of that? Did you go and ask a lot of questions to people? How did you navigate your way? Um, so first, I went to the shops where they send the, they sell the uh, uh, Maasai beads. They're in uh, River Road. Mm -hmm. So it's called Cot Bead. It's a very big, everyone who does the any jewelry business, anything. they know mm -hmm. <laughs> where Cot Bead is. Mm -hmm. So I saw the brass and I was very interested. I was like, what do you do use this for? And then they were telling me people use it for making jewelry, this and that and that. So I just bought a few because I had an extra, I had extra money, it was like, just give me a few, I go see what to do with it. Then I went on YouTube, then I started crafting things, and then I increased the tools, I got more and more interested, and then creating became a whole other thing which I just fell in love with. Wow. Yes. So what are some of the things that you create now? Uh, hair accessories, like the one I have on. Okay. Actually, everything I have on is something You've of me. Even your necklace? Yes, even the necklace. Amazing. Yes. And everything. all of this is brass? Yes, it's brass. Okay. Yes. Okay. Actually, this is my favorite favorite necklace <laughs> and I you're like where did you get it i made it i made it yes <laughs> all right mm. so how much does a piece like that go like for? like this goes for 2500 mm -hmm. but the range is normally between like hair accessories are very affordable a pair for small ones like i have this this is a small one a hundred a pair but this is a hundred shillings okay yes and then the this one goes for 2,500, earrings around 500 to 1,000. So they have a, a range. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people do get concerned about brass though, mm -hmm. um, uh, because they're worried about it turning mm -hmm. color or mm -hmm. staining your hands and your neck, <laughs> your <laughs> earrings. How does one maintain brass jewelry? Brass jewelry. It's very easy. There are, of course, there are a few uh, items that you can buy, the polish, the brass polish to polish it, but mm -hmm. sometimes people don't like that. I found another method that has worked for me over it time. It sounds like this is a, a, a crazy <laughs> hack of something in your... I feel like she's about to tell us, just get some toothpaste. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, just go. You see that when you're washing utensils, just do the same <laughs> to the... Oh. <laughs> not with soap, just with water and the thing for washing. The sponge. Yeah, the sponge. And it just... <laughs> It shines again. Or rub it in cotton, okay. it'll shine. Okay. Yeah, it's very simple. That's a good way to take care of it at home. Yeah, all. yeah. Okay. And it's also inexpensive. Yeah. Yes. So, but now, like, making the neck piece you have mm -hmm. on, how long did that take? Uh, around three hours. Oh, okay. Yes. So yes. if it's something you're determined to do, you can literally sit, aside, sit down can. and just exactly. make it. So the challenge comes when you have a big order and now takes a lot of time mm -hmm. and you know you have to be at work at eight so a lot of sleepless nights yeah yes how do people mostly order is it like individuals ordering pieces or are you now also beginning to get some bigger orders I am getting bigger orders right now, especially for the hair accessories, mm -hmm. where I do supply to a few salons in the Look at town. you. <laughs> hey. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, like, for example, the hairstyle I have on now, it's from a salon called Onea. Mm -hmm. They are my biggest uh, supporters. Okay. So, I also make sure I make, everyone in our house makes their hair there. <laughs> <laughs> and you also yes. then, in turn, supply them, supply with, with, the, them with, with the, the hair, accessories. hair accessories. Yes. Very, very interesting. Yes. Now that you're a businesswoman, like, for real, from Kusota <laughs> Tuta ka pocket money. <laughs> so now you're here, like mm -hmm. actually running a business, mm -hmm. um, supplying even salons. Mm -hmm. What have been your biggest lessons so far? 
Ah, oh, my biggest lessons. First, uh, managing money was my biggest. That even made me want to set autonomy at some point. I okay. had to go. Because okay. if you don't know how to manage the money, you might find yourself uh, by you've used all the money, you've, you've not paid yourself, yeah. you've not separated your money from the business, so you're not able to replenish. Mm -hmm. So I think that was the biggest challenge, but thank God I kept that in check okay. at, uh, at some point. Okay. Yes. And also th another challenge was managing uh, orders as well as work, mm -hmm. yes. Managing, so that time management. Time management was also a, a big challenge. Okay. Yes, which has now caused me, I've sourced for a, a help right now. So at okay. least I have help from outside. I can just make orders or tell the person I'm working with, I need this and this and this, and then they're done. And then we carry on from there. Okay. Mm. So now that you've moved from cards, are you still doing cards? No, no, no. You I haven't done cards, cards in now. years. Now yes. your, your heart is in the jewelry. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, where do you see yourself going next? So you started this business in 2011. Mm -hmm. Yes. Next year you'll have been doing this for 10 years. Ten years yes. That's amazing. <laughs> so um, kudos to you Thank for you. you know sticking it out this long. Thank but you. what are your sort of future hopes for your business? Uh, okay, I really have big dreams. I hope uh, to have it at least, the goal is to have a shop in at least every country in the world or every continent to have a shop for Pride Arts. Mm. Though I do, I do ship to other countries and other continents all over the world at, at on request when someone wants. But the goal is to be present in each and every continent. All right. Yes. Good for you. Yes. So as we let you go, let us know how people can find your jewelry pieces. Okay, um, I'm on Instagram as Pride Arts, Pride underscore Arts with a Y and the arts has a Z, mm -hmm. and also in Facebook and Twitter. Okay. Yes. Great. Thank yes. you so much to you, Laura Luala. It yes. sounds so gisty too. <laughs> my father, my father. Hey, thanks to you. Um, yes. <laughs> thank you, Laura, for thank coming you. through and sharing your journey of uh, entrepreneurship with art. Um, uh, through art with us. Congratulations Thank on you your so successes much. so far. Once she started a business in, in, in college, <laughs> out of looking for pocket money and almost 10 years later now, yes. here you are. Yes. Uh, very in encouraging story. Thank yes. you guys for watching the show. I do appreciate your time and your company. Let's do this again tomorrow. Even more Full Circle with Joyce coming your way from 8 to 10 a.m. Until then, have yourselves a blessed day. We'll see you soon. Ciao.